morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad to see you again. Does it feel like it's a little bit brighter this morning than it was last week at this time? Did you change your clocks? Everyone had to change their clocks this week, didn't they? So that now it's a little sunnier in the morning and it gets dark earlier. It's kind of a strange thing, isn't it? Things that we do when the seasons change. We're going to hear some stories about that kind of thing today. We're going to hear some stories about why, why we have fall in the first place. And also why some trees lose their leaves, but others don't. So let's get started. we got a lot to do. All right? <laughs> Clap your hands if you love stories. Clap your hands, I know you do. I'm so glad that we could be together. Glad to share a story time with you. Have you been out looking at all the leaves on the ground yet? Have you been raking them? Did you ever notice that there's one kind of tree that never loses its leaves? Here's a story about that. So a long time ago, it was starting to get really, really cold because winter was coming. And all the birds that, that didn't like the winter flew south so they could have warm weather. But there was one little bird who had a broken wing. And so he couldn't fly off with the others. He didn't know what to do. He hopped around the forest looking for somewhere he could stay where he would be sheltered against the cold. And he saw the trees. And he thought, maybe they'll keep me warm in the winter. So he hopped up to a beautiful, beautiful birch tree. And he said, beautiful birch tree, will you let me live in your warm branches until springtime comes? Dear me, said the birch tree, what a thing to ask. I have to take care of my own leaves throughout the winter. That's enough. You go away. So the little bird hopped and hopped and hopped with his broken wing until it came to the next tree. It was a great big oak tree. It said, oh, big oak tree, will you let me live in your warm branches until springtime comes? <clears throat> Dear me, said the oak tree, what a thing to ask. If you stay in my branches all winter, you'll eat all of my acorns. Go away. So the little bird hopped and hopped and hopped and hopped a little bit further and came to a beautiful willow tree. You know, the ones with the big branches that droop down. So, oh, beautiful willow tree. Will you let me live in your warm branches until springtime comes? No, indeed, said the willow tree. I never speak to strangers. Go away. And so the little bird didn't know where to go. They kept hopping and hopping and hopping. And after a while, the spruce tree saw him. Now the spruce tree is like a kind of a pine tree, it has needles instead of leaves. And the spruce tree said, where are you going, little bird? The little bird said, I don't know. If the trees won't let me live in them, and my wing is broken and I can't fly, I don't know what to do. And the spruce tree said, you may live on one of my branches. Here's the warmest one of all. And he showed him. And the bird said, but can I stay all winter? Yes, said the spruce tree. I should like to have you stay here. The pine tree stood beside the spruce. And when he saw the little bird hopping and fluttering with his broken wing, he said, well, my branches aren't very warm, but I can keep the wind off because I'm big and strong. And then the little bird fluttered into the warm branches of the spruce and the pine tree kept the wind off his house. And the juniper tree, that's another kind of a, like a pine tree, saw what was going on and said that she would give the little bird his dinner all winter from her branches, juniper berries. They're good for little birds. <laughs> and the little bird was very, very comfortable in his warm nest sheltered from the wind with juniper berries to eat. The trees that he had talked to first at the edge of the forest remarked on it to each other. I wouldn't take care of any strange bird, said the birch tree. I wouldn't risk my acorns, said the oak tree. I wouldn't speak to strangers, said the willow. And the three trees stood up very tall and proud of themselves. But that night the north wind came. He came into the woods to play and he puffed at the leaves with his icy breath and every leaf that he touched fell to the ground. He wanted to touch every leaf in the forest because he loved to see the trees with their bare branches. 
And he went to his father, the Frost King, and he said, Can I touch every leaf? No, said the Frost King. The trees that were kind to that little bird with a broken wing, they can keep their leaves and needles. So the North Wind had to leave them alone. And the spruce and the pine and the juniper tree kept their leaves and needles all the winter. And they've done so ever since. Okay, let's be scarecrows together. It's about the time of year for scarecrows because all of the seeds and things are out there. The birds are trying to gather up. Let's be scarecrows and scare them off. The old scarecrow is such a funny man. He flops in the wind as hard as he can. He flops to the right. He flops to the left. He flops back and forth till he's out of breath. His arms swing out and his legs swing too. Kick your legs. <laughs> he nods his head in a how do you do. See him flippity flop when the wind blows hard. That funny old scarecrow in our backyard. <laughs> I know I've told you before about why we have a lot of the folk tales that we have. Now remember, folk tales are stories that are usually passed down not by books, but by people telling them to each other. One person tells another, maybe they tell their children and it goes on and on and on and on. And a lot of the time, those folk tales are to explain things that people didn't really have good explanations for. Like a long time ago when we didn't know where rain came from, or we didn't know why elephants had big long noses. I'm gonna tell you one now that people made up and told each other to explain why we have seasons, why we have summer and spring and fall and winter. And this story comes from a place in South America, way down at the bottom of it, in a place called Patagonia. So it has some words that maybe will sound a little bit funny, but I think you'll understand it anyway. So a long time ago, there was a story about a god because they had lots of different religions. And this particular god was named Cooch, and he was so lonely. He didn't have anyone around him, no animals, no friends. And so he cried. He cried and cried and cried, and his tears lasted for so long that they made the ocean. And when he stopped crying, he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he decided he could make some fish and some other animals that lived in the ocean. And then he made a big island in the middle of the ocean and he put a bunch of animals on it. And that was pretty good. But after some time passed, those animals started to argue with each other. Mother Guanaco always spoke first. She was an animal that was kind of like a llama, if you know what that looks like. And she said, I need a change of seasons. This place is good, but I need lots more times of warm and sunshine because I need the grass to grow so that I can feed myself to take care of my babies. And Kaken, who was a kind of goose with a short neck, said, yes, yes, we need plenty of sun to raise our babies. The sparrow, who was hopping around from tree to tree, said, but geese don't really feed their babies with their bodies. And why do we need that much sunshine and that long a time? And the goose spoke up and said, but if we have lots of lots of warm time, the grass will grow nice and thick so we can hide our nests from wildcats and foxes. And that, of course, hurt the fox's feelings a little bit and kind of upset him because he needed to eat too. He said, we like it to be cold. When the cold is here, our fur grows nice and warm and shiny. And in the summer weather, my fur starts to fall out. It doesn't look good. I want cold weather. And the little meadowlark bird said, no, no, we get sick and we die when it's cold. And then Mrs. Owl spoke up and said, maybe we should have a good cave for the creatures to protect themselves from the cold. And the puma, a kind of wildcat, leaped into the circle and said, cold, yes, I need lots of cold. It's easier to track our prey when they leave footprints in the snow. Flamingo 
started to turn even pinker than he already was. And he cried, if winter lasted all year long, I would have to leave. Then he stood up on one leg and said, it's better if the whole year is summer. And then Popiche, the armadillo, you know what an armadillo is? It's kind of, kind of like a possum maybe, <laughs> waddled forward and said, here's an idea. Why don't we try half summer and half winter? That way we can be happy in the warm and then sleep when it's cold. And the quail piped up, how about three seasons of cold and then three of warmth and then everything else can be mixed up. That would be fair. And the mouse said, mixed up. She didn't have a very big brain as she really got confused kind of often when she spoke. And the quail said, well, it's obvious. After it's warm, then it can be cool. And then when the weather cools, then we can have warm again. The armadillo said, that's too complicated. I'm confused too. <laughs> now, at about this point, Mara, the hare, a rabbit, stood up. She was long-legged and she was bold and she had a beautiful long tail. Have you ever seen a rabbit with a tail before that was long? Well, she'd been thinking pretty hard as the others discussed. And she thought we needed to find a really good answer so that everyone could be happy. And Mara said, the problem we have is how long winter should last. I say three moons, three months, is plenty. The ostrich said, no, no, winter all the time, winter all the time. That's ridiculous, said Mara the rabbit. She said, if it were always cold, we would die of frostbite. And we would starve, said the birds as they chirped and jumped from branch to branch. When we're too cold, we can't sing and you would miss my songs. The ostrich stamped his feet and said, those of you who like warm weather can go somewhere else. We'll have it cold here. But Mara shook her head. She said, no, it's better for everyone to have a climate that plants can grow and fruits can grow and the babies can get big and strong. And some of them can burrow and some of them can play on ice and some of them can track the things they want to eat. And this is how we should live. Three months of winter, is fairest. The animals got louder and louder. Everyone was arguing and they were stamping their paws and snapping their beaks. Twelve moons, twelve moons, twelve moons, said the ostrich who wanted twelve moons of winter every year. Three, the rabbit said, stomping her foot. And then, getting tired of arguing, she started to scamper away into her burrow. But the ostrich wasn't done fighting. The ostrich stamped his foot down hard on Mara's tail. And Mara struggled to get away, but she tried for so long and so hard that her tail pulled right off. And suddenly everybody was quiet. And about this time, Elal, who we hadn't heard from before, he was a son of a giant and a cloud. So he was enormous and had a big voice. He'd been sitting quietly, not using it as he listened to the animals, walked into the middle of the circle and said, every year there will be four seasons with three moons each. Three moons for summer, three moons for fall, three moons for winter, and three moons for spring. And that is the end of this conversation. Well, there was no more arguing. After that, Mara never did have a tail again. And the ostrich lost his voice from arguing so long and was hoarse, even now. But just as all said, every year we have four seasons, three months each. And every time we hit one of their favorite seasons, all those animals are happy just for a little while but it'll come again. All right, we're gonna sing a song about autumn leaves, the ones falling on the ground. I want you to get up and see if you can do all of the movements that I'm gonna sing about. Think about the things that you do with leaves and what did they do? 
I bet you can act them out. So when I say autumn leaves are falling down, can you show me the leaves falling down? Or maybe you want to fall down yourself. That's okay. That's just fine. And when we talk about sweeping them up, I bet you can pretend that too. And I think you'll know what to do when we sing about the wind blowing, right? <laughs> Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down, falling down. Autumn leaves are falling down on the ground. Let's sing that again. <laughs> Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down, falling down. Autumn leaves are falling down on the ground. Find a broom and start to sweep, start to sweep, start to sweep. Find a broom and start to sweep, start to sweep. Let's sweep some more. <laughs> Find a broom and start to sweep, start to sweep, start to sweep. Find a broom and start to sweep, start to sweep. Make them in a great big heap, a great big heap, great big heap. Make them in a great big heap on the ground. Bigger. Make them in a bigger heap, <laughs> bigger heap, bigger heap. Make them in a giant heap on the ground. Here comes the wind to blow them round, blow them round, blow them round. Here comes the wind to blow them round, blow them round. Can you blow like that one more time? Here comes the wind to blow them round, blow them round, blow them round. Here comes the wind to blow them round, blow them round. And then what do they do when they're flying in the air? Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down, falling down. Autumn leaves are falling down on the ground. And you could sing that over and over again, couldn't you? <laughs> well, that's it for this week. I'm really glad to see you. And I hope that you're staying warm out there. It's pretty cold, isn't it, sometimes? And I hope that you're getting ready to have a really good November. It's a whole new month, a whole new chance for good things to happen and for good days to come along and for us to have lots of fun together. So I'll get to see you next week and share some more stories with you. But for now, let's everyone get in a big stretch. Can you show me? <clears throat> reach for the ceiling, high up is it, and touch the floor. Stand up again. Let's do some more. <laughs> touch your head. Ugh. And now your knees. And up to your shoulders, like this, you see. <sighs> reach for the ceiling, and touch the floor. That's all there is. <laughs> there isn't any more. Bye-bye.